Hi everyone, Ronnie Wink here, and today I'm going to be talking about something that we all have to deal with in one way or another, tattling. This tends to be the time of the year when our students begin tattling more frequently. It might seem like every time you pick up your students from recess or lunch, there is another complaint or a tattle about another student. It can be frustrating, and let's be honest, who has the time to listen to all those complaints? But why do kids tattle? There are a variety of reasons children might start tattling, and it's important to be aware of some of their motivations. For one, our students are becoming more comfortable with each other and you as the teacher. Oftentimes with familiarity comes conflict as they know each other and know what to expect and which boundaries to push. Another reason that tattling may increase is that our students want to gain favor with you as the teacher, thereby exerting their power, boosting their self-esteem, or getting your attention. Still another reason children may be tattling is that they begin testing their limits and boundaries. Are you consistent with rule enforcement? Are you fair in the way you handle problems? Will you just brush them off or will you really listen? As children get older, many of them become more obsessed with the idea of fairness. As they learn rules and responsibilities, they oftentimes feel, in, feel that everyone should follow the same rules and responsibilities, even if they don't always follow those rules. When they become aware of infractions of rules or responsibilities, they oftentimes take it upon themselves to let you know about those infractions. A big factor in why children might tattle is that they may not have problem solving skills embedded into their bag of tricks. They may not know how to respond in certain situations. This is something that needs to be taught and modeled. Finally, our students may have legitimate concerns. What may seem trivial, trivial to us might be a huge deal to them. Students have problems and sometimes they need help solving those problems. But what is tattling and should we listen to it? We want our students to be heard and validated so that they know we are a safe person for them to talk to. But there is a fine line between listening to our students and encouraging a tattling environment. So let's begin by defining what tattling is. Tattling is when you are upset with someone, so you tell on them to get them into trouble. Conversely, reporting is trying to keep someone safe or out of trouble, or to let someone know if someone else is hurting or hurt. In other words, is to get someone in trouble, reporting is to get someone out of trouble. We want to encourage our students to report problems, but not to tattle. Students should report significant events that threaten someone's physical or emotional safety. By teaching our students the difference between tattling and reporting, you will drastically cut down on the meaningless tattles while still getting important information as it arises. What better way to teach them through than through literature? There are a variety of books out there that deal with tattling and serve as a springboard to cla classroom conversations, modeling, and writing lessons. Some of my favorites are a Bad Case of the Tattletongue by Julia Cook, Little Miss Tattletale by Coney Joe Bryant, Don't Squeal Unless It's a Big Deal by Jeannie Franz Ransom, and Armadillo Tattletale. So we need to begin by teaching our students to report and not to tattle. Role playing is a powerful tool here. It is fun to gather your students and show them how silly it can look when they tattle. You can let a student play the teacher and you can play the student so that you can really add in the drama. Make sure after you role play, you explain to the students the difference between the tattling and the reporting. Regardless of the grade level, we need to model real life situations. Another idea is to use task cards such as these with your students as springboards to discussions surrounding the idea of tattling versus reporting. These cards can be used in combination with Kagan structures such as quiz quiz trade or numbered heads together to encourage academic discourse. Revolver revolving around this topic, this free resource is linked in the slides. We can begin with an anchor chart, something like this, where we are talking with our students about what should be reported, what they can handle on their own, and what they just can let go. 
We can also create anchor charts such as this one that goes through a series of steps that children can run through before they decide to tell you something. This can be a class chart or something that is at each individual desk for students to refer to. What better way for them to go through the steps before you tell, ask yourself these questions. Am I helping someone or am I trying to get them in trouble? Is someone in danger? Is someone hurt? Is it an emergency? Do you need help from an adult? Can you solve the problem on your own? A copy of this anchor chart is also linked in the slide presentation for your use. If our students have gone through the checklist and they believe it is report worthy information, we need to let them know when is an important time, appropriate time to report. It is a good idea to encourage our students to re report privately. They can speak with you, write a note, or report what happened in a conversation journal. A conversation journal is often used in the older grades and it's a good idea in terms of using a notebook where the student and teacher correspond weekly or bi-weekly. It can be a great outlet for concerns, feelings, and conflicts. It is also a private forum so that the teacher and student can communicate with each other without involving others. For younger students, you can have them fill out an incident report, such as this one, that can be filled out and turned in to discuss with the teacher at a later date. This form is also linked in the presentation. Many teachers decide to create something special for their students to put their reports in so that the teacher can address the issues at a later date. The only caution here is that we want to create trust with our students. So if you do have your students putting their reports somewhere, make sure you find the time to address the reports for your students. One idea is a tattle monster such as this one created from a Kleenex box. Students can put the reports in the box. A lot of teachers use a tattle turtle, which can be a poster with a turtle or a stuffed turtle that kids can report to. This poem called Timmy Turtle is linked and can be used in correlation with the tattle turtle. Finally, many teachers I have seen have used a tattle phone for students to report the tattles to. However you choose to have the information delivered to you, it's important to remember that we need to fully understand the circumstances that the students are trying to explain. If you clearly understand, it will help guide you as to whether or not you need to step in, enforce a rule, or give the student a strategy to try to solve the problem themselves. When you are dealing with students who are reporting something to you, it is best to respond to the student in a positive way. Try to think about what the student could really be saying. They are telling you that this information is important to them and they want you to hear them and help them. If you brush them off with a simple stop tattling or is that really important, then we're teaching them not to come to us if something isn't right. Here are some helpful phrases to get you started. Thank you for telling me. I'll try to watch closely. Wow, you really know our rules. Thank you for telling me. Why don't you write about it in your journal and tell me more? Why don't you draw a picture about how it made you feel? All of these phrases are respectful and still honor the student's information while treating them with respect and trying to get at the, the root of the problem. After you have begun to teach the difference between tattling and reporting and made it a norm in your classroom, you can begin to teach the important skill of problem solving through conflict resolution. Students will then begin to learn how to handle situations themselves, which is of course our ultimate goal. You can empower a child to solve problems on their own by coaching them on how to resolve conflicts when they are calm and not actually in a conflict with another student. Role playing works well here as you explain the students how to resolve their conflicts in a productive manner. Students can brainstorm solutions and explore the pros and cons of each possible solution. This could even lead to a great classroom discussion and possible friendly debate. Going through this process allows kids to practice the important life skill of problem solving, which involves students learning how to cool off when they're upset, speak directly and calmly to each other speak assertively, honestly, and kindly, 
listen carefully to each other, and finally to learn how to propose solutions and agree upon trying one of the, those solutions, including coming to a compromise. Keep in mind that it is unrealistic to expect students to solve all of their problems on their own. Depending upon the age level of your students and their maturity levels, they may not learn how to engage in conflict, conflict resolution independently, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Using a consistent solving problem, problem solving approach can help young kids learn to solve their own problems. Most approaches to teaching problem solving involve giving students a choice of options on how to solve their problems and teaching them each choice explicitly. If you follow a consistent approach each time you help your students navigate a tricky situation, our students will begin to pick up on it. They will know what is expected of them. For our older students, we can give them a conflict resolution guide to follow when conflicts arise. You can use these posters to give the students sentence stems to start the discussions, how they can respond with empathy and honesty, and a framework for them for how to forgive each other completely. For our students, you can give them something like this problem solving wheel with ideas for how to solve problems. Both of these ideas are also linked in the presentation. As you navigate the second half of the school year, I hope you found something useful to help your students begin reporting instead of tattling, as well as how to engage in problem solving. Thank you for watching and be sure to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.